Yeah. Uh, we lost one of our greats. We did. And in all seriousness, the passing of Elizabeth Taylor is one of those momentous deaths that really only happens a handful of times in anyone's lifetime. I mean, you know, Kate Hepburn was the last one. And, uh, you know, Elizabeth Taylor was the original movie superstar. And there hasn't been one like her since. And people don't realize, and then we'll get into yeah. uh, cutting the corn in a second. Uh, people don't realize how, uh, how she was covered back in the day was completely unheard of. It was. The amount of attention she got. It was, it was like Princess Diana before there was Princess Diana. Except she was Princess Diana and a movie star all wrapped in one. I mean, she really was almost American royalty. And it was a level of coverage that even rivaled what came in subsequent years with, with Jackie Onassis. I mean, it was, it was unprecedented uh, for a movie star of, of any stature to have received that kind of coverage. And she was the first actress or actor to receive a million dollar payday. For Cleopatra. For Cleopatra. Now, mind you, highest paid, not just the highest paid woman, but the highest paid performer in Hollywood at that time, which had not been a woman since the days of Mary Pickford in the silent era. That was extraordinary. So she, uh, she broke all kinds of, of barriers and set all kinds of records and really, uh, you know, was, was a, 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 an unbelievable icon by any standard. And she won two Oscars and broke up two marriages. Yeah, yes, she did. <laughs> and she was married to Richard Burton twice. That is true. Uh, and, and I would say before we kind of go on with this, but the thing that has always made her extremely unique in my eyes is that uh, whereas other actresses of her age and her generation kind of burned out once they got into their 30s, she accelerated. She did her best work in her 30s and in her 40s. Uh, you know, she seemed to become much more comfortable as an actress as opposed to an ingenue or a star. And um, kind of, again, set a new, a new dimension to what stars and especially women could accomplish at that stage in their careers. And we'll talk about this in a second, but yeah. there was actually a, one of her most, most famous films. She was in her 30s playing somebody in her 50s. Exactly. And she was comfortable with that, and she was yeah. rewarded with an Oscar for that. She was. And we'll get to it in a second with uh, Cutting the Cord! Oh, you can't do it to me, Mark. Oh. <laughs> Just cut the cord! I gave you so long to have that thing shoot up. It is. Ooh, classy. Classy. So here's Little how, embossed golden thing. Here's how cutting the cord works on a very special cutting the cord. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to recommend four Liz Taylor films. She, yep. she did a lot of films, but these are four of her, her, of her best. And you can get all of these on one of the various streaming services mm -hmm. that are out there. Thus so no need to the leave cord. the house. Just You don't need cable anymore. You cut the cord. Sit, cut comfortable, the cord. sit comfortably at home and... Why do I feel like we're in an opera? <laughs> we're like, shh. It's good. It's a reverence. Yes. Or, reverence or, or and at honor. Or like a Los Angeles Dodgers game. Shh. Reverence and honor of the Everybody, deceased. I will say the first one, and we will give that a golf clap. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Uh, on Amazon. <laughs> J-Mac's okay with that. Not on board. Not on board. J-Mac's not on board. Uh, however, uh, the first film is on Amazon Prime, which is uh, free, and it is the 1966 film, uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Directed by Mike Nichols and uh, based on the uh, Edward uh, Albee play. Uh, Taylor won an Oscar for playing uh, Martha, the uh, drunken wife of a professor played by Richard Burton, uh, who she was married to at the time. And the movie is basically sort of a night in the life of a very twisted marriage, <clears throat> a sad, sadistic marriage filled with these really unpleasant, uncomfortable, drunken games. And it's with George Siegel as well. well we and, love George Siegel. And Sandy Dennis. And Sandy Dennis. And the movie was quite unprecedented for the time. I mean, Nichols had wanted, uh, the studio and others had wanted other actors to play the husband and wife. But because Taylor and Burt were married at the time, and their marriage was rather tempestuous, as Wade said, they were actually married twice, Nichols really fought for them to play these roles because he was hoping that the conflict in their real marriage would spill over into the film. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it did. And, you know, Taylor... Absolutely. Uh, Taylor gained almost 30 pounds by some accounts to play this woman who was like 20 years older than she really yeah. than she was in real life, you yeah. know. And it's it's just an amazing performance. And what's the reason why the film holds up is that at the time uh, the play had a lot of controversial language, and the movie had a lot of controversial language. And at the time, Jack Valenti had just been installed as the new president of the uh, MPAA. 
And uh, the rating system was not yet in existence. No. It was about a year and a half away from being introduced. But this film, yeah. with the language, was one of the films that sort of pushed Valenti into, into kind of accelerating the creation of yeah. the rating system, which, of course, uh, 40 years later, w w we wind up with Sucker Punch. And, oh, jeez. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> now, and and, and, and uh, another important point, the film was shot in black and white, which by that time was increasingly becoming kind of old-fashioned, old hat. Why do we have to have movies in black and white anymore? Everything they had, they had by this time, you know, they used to have separate categories for black and white cinematography at the Oscars and color cinematography, black and white art direction, color art direction. That had gone away. So it was like black and white was being phased out. And they made the decision to tell this story in black and white, which was gutsy. And I think it makes the performance better, too. It does. The movie was nominated for 13 Oscars. It is the only film at, at, up to that time to be nominated for every category it was mm -hmm. eligible for yeah it was nominated for everything yeah. and she won and won a couple more and it holds up because it is such a a, a bitter twisted piece of marital gamesmanship the the, the the uh just the the sadistic games that this couple plays it it is it really it really does hold up it is an angry mean sadistic film really well shot i think i think and the last thing i'll say on this is i think this is a we, we talk a lot about how stodgy plays can be when they're adapted to the screen and ah oh, you know it, you lose the live theater dynamic and it just feels like a play this is a perfect example of how you get inside a play and you make it cinematic and you don't have to open it up much it's still people basically mostly in a house talking well, the, the, the play took place all in a house. Entirely. Entirely. This move has one move. You go out, well, you, you go, go out into to the, the front car yard. And, then you, it, well, and you're in the car at one point. Right, yes, you are. Yeah. But, but it's still basically very claustrophobic and very talky, but it is also extremely cinematic. And it's, this, anyone who wants to know how you adapt a play for the movies, this is how you do it. You do it with Absolutely. Uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf from 1966. That is my yeah. first pick. Bravo. Bravo. Golf clap. Wade, what is your first pick? My first pick is also a play adapted into a film. This is Tennessee Williams' Cat on a Hot Tin Roof from 1958. And uh, this one is available on Netflix uh, for $7.99. Seven, with a $7.99 subscription, Netflix Instant. Um, you know, uh, all you have to say is Elizabeth Taylor in her prime, Paul Newman in his prime, doing Tennessee Williams, directed by Richard Brooks. It's amazing. Uh, I'm not a huge Tennessee Williams fan, typically speaking. I'm, uh, I, I, I tend to kind of have an aversion to movies about sweaty people in their underwear from the South. But this, this is a really, this, thank you, Elaine. This is, a, this is really an exceptional film. And it is, in many respects, even though it's kind of Paul Newman's movie, um, Elizabeth Taylor makes it her movie. And in, in my opinion, she makes the Tennessee Williams material better than it really actually is. I think this is better than this has ever been on stage. Uh, this is the way to see it, and uh, it is really an exceptional film. Might even be Richard Brooks's best film. You know, uh, one piece of trivia about the film that people may not know is that Taylor's husband, Mike Todd, yeah. died in a plane crash while, during the production of the mm -hmm. film, which delayed Taylor's arrival onto the set. And, and we should point out Mike Todd also, just uh, two years before this, won uh, an Oscar as producer of Around the World in 80 Days, which was the first big widescreen movie. Todd A.O., the widescreen format, was something that he innovated. So, um, yeah. Uh, Tennessee Williams uh, hated the movie, but what do we care? What well, he's guy's like a hack anyway. You, By the way, <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you realize who, who was up for the, uh, uh, who was considered for the uh, Paul Newman role? Uh, no, tell me. Elvis. Was oh. he really? Yes, he was. How bad would that have been? Elvis oh. and Elizabeth Taylor, that would have been. Uh, now, <laughs> Elvis and Juliet Prowse, but they already made that movie. That was, what was that, one of those Elvis movies. I think it was Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. It might have been. Uh, no, but Cat on a Hot Tin Roof is, 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 is just great. It's, it is it's great. And look, film. I mean, the fact that Tennessee Williams uh, did not care for the film, I think is kind of beside the point. You know, it, it's some, a lot of time playwrights don't like the better adaptations of their own work just because it's not theirs, because they don't have a handle on it. I mean, uh, you know. I, I can see Eugene O'Neill loving uh, The Iceman Cometh. Sure. Because you have to, because it's, it's just four hours. Sure. That's it. <laughs> but look, George Bernard Shaw hated the film version of Pygmalion, and had he still been alive, he would have hated My Fair Lady. Case closed. <coughs> right. So. Go th you know what, Wade, go through a piece of paper at the camera. That's what no, I'm No, no, I'm done throwing. It's, it's Zack Snyder I'm, 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 <laughs> took, it, took it out of me, so I'm, uh, I'm honoring Elizabeth Taylor at the moment. All right, so we have Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. And uh, next we have from 1956, <coughs> Giant. Giant is available from the Warner Brothers archive. Now, if you go to wbshop.com, They'll actually burn you a disc of this thing, 
and they will uh, send it to you. But it's also available on Netflix and Amazon Prime, may I say. Now, uh, the movie was directed by uh, George Stevens, and it's this huge, sprawling epic. It's like two generations in the, uh, in the family of this, this, uh, these, this Texas rancher. Um, Rock Hudson plays Bic Benedict, who uh, falls in love with a rancher's daughter, played by Liz Taylor. And it is, it's a terrific film. And what people don't remember about the movie is that there's a lot of subtext in there because in the movie, uh, in the movie there's a lot of racism against uh, Mexican-Americans. And of course the characters sort of turn by the end. And, uh, you know, and also, since it spans so many years, the movie sort of starts in one place. And then by the end, you see how Texas became this sort of, you know, rich oil man's playground, which it wasn't when the film started. So there's a lot of subtext there. And also, which I'm sure you're about to mention, which has nothing to do with Liz Taylor, yeah. is that it was James Dean's last film. Yes. I was also going to mention, interesting, as long as we're talking about film uh, formats, George Stevens, at this time, when widescreen was taking over, again, it was sort of like with black and white in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, George Stevens said, I don't care if widescreen's hot, I see this film in my head as, a, as a, basically a flat square frame. So he shot at 166. And uh, that was unheard of. That was I, the last major Hollywood film to be shot 166. But you're talking 1956, when part of the reason why widescreen was even introduced yeah. was to get people yeah. out of their homes and stop watching exactly. television and back into the theaters. But it was Everything was widescreen at that time. I mean, it really was. 55, 56, that's when widescreen blew up huge, and uh, Stevens resisted it. He did. And... Uh, the film stars Rock Hudson, and you know Taylor and Rock Hudson had a very close relationship. Yes. And Rock Hudson died of AIDS. That's what sort of got uh, Elizabeth her to Taylor become an activist. to become an AIDS activist. So yeah. really, thanks to <coughs> meeting on Giant, yes. Liz Taylor became one of the great AIDS activists. Very true. So there's, it's not only a great film, but it's got a kind of a great story behind it. Yep. And a great legacy yep. in all the AIDS charity work that she did. Yes, indeed. So uh, that is Giant from 1956. Now, Wade, you have one more, correct? I have one more. Another George Stevens film, but from an early period, 1951. Uh, George Stevens' uh, A Place in the Sun, what? which is based on the novel An American Tragedy, which is a great novel, and it's a great film. Contrary to what a lot of people have tried to suggest, it is not some kind of a weird socialist diatribe with just uh, cardboard characters populating it and some... No. It is, it is genuinely about the characters. It's a little bit about the class system in America, but it's a, we have a class system like any other country has a class system. It is about characters who are trapped in their classes, and it is, it is less a statement about the society than it is a statement about how people react to a society that places them into, into holes, that places them into, into, uh, into little, neat little boxes. Uh, beautifully shot in black and white. It is the story of a man, played by Montgomery Clift, who uh, lives something of a lie in his life to try and make a better place for himself. And uh, two women are drawn into this, one uh, played by Shelley Winters, one uh, played by Elizabeth Taylor. Uh, the, the, the movie is gut-wrenching. It is a horrible, horrible tragedy, but it contains some of the best acting you will ever see in any American film. All three of those performances are spectacular. <coughs> and Elizabeth Taylor in particular, who is not technically the central part of the film, is amazing because she could have just walked on and been a beautiful ingenue, the beautiful, untouchable trophy wife. But by the end of the film, you realize that there is so much more depth to her character than has even been written into it that you cannot help just be profoundly moved by everything that has happened in the film. It's one of those rare films that makes you think about its themes for days, even weeks afterwards. Uh, Place in the Sun, beautiful film. You know, this really was, uh, was Taylor's first adult role. I mean, she was like 18 yeah, at the time. True. I mean, Cliff was about 10 years older, but yeah. she was like 18 at the time. Mm -hmm. And at 18 years old, you know, as an, as, a, as an adult, I mean, she was just beautiful. You can just, you just she leapt off the screen. Yeah. You know, from such a young age. It's such a passionate uh, love story. Shelley Winters is great in it. Oh, uh, it, honestly, people who, who don't think that Shelley Winters was like a real actress, Watch this. this. She r will rip your heart out. It is, it's a great film. Everyone, I mean, and one of the best films that George Stevens ever did. You know, he's really firing all so cylinders. So the chat here. room is asking, and I asked you, and you have a good answer for this, yeah. uh, why no Cleopatra? Uh, because Cleopatra is, and it pains me to say this, it's a terrible movie. It's not as bad as everybody makes it out to be, but Cleopatra is just one of those misbegotten misfires. The problem with Cleopatra is, A, it didn't have a good script. It all begins with the script. And in that case, they didn't have a good script. And then it was also a, it was a, a production that ran away from everybody. It was $50 million, which in 1968 dollars 
would, would be more, like more than Avatar. Way more than Avatar. You're talking about like a six hundred million dollar movie today Jesus. within by inflation standards. Oh. They built wow. the ships in the film. They built entire ships. Now you would uh, just CGI for Doll ninety eight. Yeah, Elizabeth. Back then, and, and, they built and, it. And, 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 you know, Elizabeth Taylor got paid a million dollars for this. First, like we said, first time ever. You have Rex Harrison. You have Richard Burton. You've got ships. You got the story of Cleopatra, uh, and it just ran away from everybody. And it ran away from everyone to such an extent it nearly bankrupted twentieth century Fox, and they had to sell off their back their back lot, which today is Century City. That is true. In, uh, oh, in L.A. Wow. Yeah. So the idea with Cleopatra is that even though it has a great story behind it, it's not a great film. It's not a great film. That's why we did not recommend it. But we also would like to have recommended uh, The Taming of the Shrew, which was another Taylor Burton collaboration, probably one of the best Shakespeare movies ever made. Um, but unfortunately, it's not available in any streaming format, only on DVD. So go get it. Well, thanks, Wade. You buy it at thanks. Borders. Huh? I'm sure. <laughs> Wait up! Uh, Shawshank Redemption. Did I mention 30 that? Thirty percent off, <laughs> unless you have a coupon. That's oh, unless you're how dare you! I, that's <laughs> good. You know, I don't feel bad, Mike, and I won't. I refuse to feel bad because I don't have the card. I get forty percent off of nothing. I don't got the card. Well, no one has the card anymore. <laughs> Unbelievable. Two, touche. I showed three shay. Mike. Exactly. All right. Man. So we have a Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Yes. Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Yes. Giant. Yes. A Place in the Sun. Yes. So go ahead and list Taylor out because she deserves it. She was one of the great, great actors, one of the great screen goddesses I, of all time. I kid you not. You you sit back, just spend a whole day watching these four films. You will end that day feeling so satisfied, so happy, so in love with what movies are capable of doing. Uh, it really, this is a this is a great day at the movies. That is true. So Without there you even go. leaving the house. So that is uh, cutting the cord, Elizabeth Taylor edition. <laughs>